Hi, this is Mr. Max with my first part on a video that involves equations that can be reduced to quadratic form. There is a part two, a little bit more complex uh, equations. All right, so the first five equations that I have here is x to the power four minus x, seven x squared plus 12 is equal to zero x minus 9 square root of x plus 14 equals 0. All these equations that have got square root, you need to be able to be very careful when you're dealing with that, such that when you are solving them, it's always going to be best for you to check your solutions to see if they are equaling to the 0, whatever is on the other side. Right, so you can pause the video and then you can have a go and see if you could manage to find these are sort of hidden quadratics, if one can call them like that. Okay, so I have the first two here. I'm going to start obviously with the first one here. So x raised to the power 4 minus 7x squared plus 12 is equal to 0. So I have got my method, and I'm not saying it's the only way. There are many ways that you can solve this, but I'm deciding for the purpose of this video to use only one specific method that I'm using throughout so that it is easier for you to get to understand what is it that I'm trying to do. But feel free to use all other methods um, as long as it suits you. Right, so what I'm doing here is that x to the power of 4 is nothing but x squared all squared. So I can actually then split this x to the power of 4 as it were all right, and now I'm realizing I have got x squares that are basically the same here, which I can now replace by a certain letter. And I'm going to use for the purpose of this video, k. Okay, so this becomes then k squared minus 7k plus 12 equals to 0. Now, surely you agree with me that this is an equation that makes a little bit more sense to you. It's more like things that you are used to. Right, so this factorizes as well, k minus 4, k minus 3. But now when you solve for k, k is equal to 4, because you're going to say k minus 4 equals to 0, and k is equal to 3, because k minus 3 is equal to 0. But we are not solving for k, remember? We are looking for x squared. Now in order for us to find the value, we need to take the square root, and the square root is going to be two possible values, which means we're going to have the square root of positive, uh, positive or negative square root of 4, or positive or negative square root of 3. So these are the four possible answers. And I don't really need to check them because I don't have roots and, 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 and indices that are raised to fractional indices or powers that are raised to fractional indices. So these solutions, if you were to check and you make x, for example, to be 2, then you are going to get 0. Or if you make x to be the square root of 2 or 3, rather, or the negative square root of 3. In fact, when you are putting in a negative value, remember to put brackets there. Right, for the second part, I'm bringing in a different approach. Right, the number x to the power 1, I can actually write it as nothing but x raised to the power of a half or square. Because x raised to the power of half or squared is nothing but x. So it's like it's hidden in there. And I'm going to use this approach many a times for these type of questions. And then the square root, obviously, we're going to change the square root of x from root form back to fractional index form. So the square root of x is the same then as x raised to the power of a half. So this basically here, the first term here is just x. But you see, I cleverly wanted to show you, as I did in the previous question of the x squares, that x to the power of a half and x to the power of a half are the same. And I can replace them then by whatever letter I so choose. Right, so once you are here, you can actually factorize this particular quadratic equation. k minus 2 and k minus 7 equals to 0, so k is equal to 2 or k is equal to 7. But I'm not looking for k, I'm rather looking for x to the power of a half. So x to the power of a half is equal to 2, or x to the power of a half is equal to 7. So to isolate the base, you've got to square both sides. That's the opposite of the square root of x. And once you square that, you get answers that x is equal to 4, or x is equal to 49. Whatever method you have decided to use, these are the solutions that you are supposed to find.
Right, remember that you need to check because, as I said, operations that involve, or equations that, are the, that involve square roots and stuff like that, you're better off checking to see if they match what is on the right-hand side, that zero there. And if you punch in 4 on your calculator under the equation, you realize that you get 0, the same as 49. So both of them are solutions that work for this equation. So the third question is the square root of x times the square root of x plus 1 minus 6 is equal to 0. So you're best off maybe if you can distribute this. Multiply throughout by the square root of x. Square root of x times the square root of x is nothing but x. And the square root of x times 1 is square root of x minus 6. So I'm going to use that approach that I was using. So I'm going to write this nothing as x raised to the power of a half all squared. And I'm going to make this x raised to the power of a half. And then I'm going to use the same method where I decided let the sum letter then equals to that k raised to the power of a half. Now once that I'm here, again, it looks like something that you can solve. So I can also solve this by factorization. And when I factorize, I get k plus 3 and k minus 2. Right, so k therefore is equal to negative 3 if you equate each bracket to 0 and or k is equal to 2. Again, I'm not looking for k, but for x to raise to the power of a half or the square root of x. In order for me to get rid of the square root or x raised to the power of a half, I need to square both sides and check I put this minus 3 in brackets. Because anything you square ultimately becomes positive. So the two solutions I have for this equation is x is equal to 9 or x is equal to 4. But that's not where you are ending. You need to be able to check your solutions. By inputting your answers in the equation and see whether you get whatever is on the right, in this case, 0. So when we do for 9, we get 6 as an answer, which is not equal to the right-hand side. So that x equals to 9 will not be a solution to this equation. But once you do for 4, you realize that 4 definitely gives you 0. So therefore, x is equal to 4 is the only solution to this equation. The fourth question I have here is 3 times the square root of x plus 5 all over the square root of x minus 16 is equal to 0. A little bit uh, looking weirder there. Again, as I said, you can obviously also decide. There's nothing wrong with uh, following the method I'm using here, but you can ultimately by now, if you get it, you can write this as 3k plus 5 over k minus 16 equals to 0. And from here, you can start by multiplying throughout by k because what you are looking for is you are looking to isolate so you can multiply everything by k. So once you do that, you will realize that it gives you something like 3k squared minus 16k, look at the order, plus 5 is equal to 0. And you can now start solving this equation accordingly. And once you solve for k, then you go back and say, but now I'm not looking for k, but I'm looking for the square root of x, whatever that answer will be. Remember, you will have probably two answers. And in order for you to find x, therefore, you will have to take your answer, whatever it is, if it's negative, put it in bracket, and you will go square it, and you do that for both instances. So that's a very good way of starting this question off. But I decided to just take a bit longer so that you can just follow each other. Uh, you can follow what is it that I'm doing. So you can just fall nicely into what I've been doing uh, from the onset. But otherwise, it's generally the same idea that I'm applying to solve this particular equation. And remember, towards the end then, what you do again is you are going to check your answers to see if your answers are on the right, if you're on the right path. So I'm going to start by multiplying throughout by the square root of x. So it looks long, looks complicated, but it's not really. So the idea was just to clear the fraction of this. Square root of x times the square root of x is nothing but x. So when I clean this up, I'm going to get 3x plus 5 minus 16. Square root of x equals to 0. I'm just rewriting it in a nice order. Then I apply what I've been using all along that x raised to the power of half squared is just the same as x. 
and uh, the square root of x here is x raised to the power of half, and then I let that be replaced by the k. Now remember, this is what I was referring to, what I was doing in the beginning. So you got ultimately to this equation 3k squared minus 16k plus 5 is equal to 0. So you look for two numbers, multiply, give you 15, and when they are added, give you negative 16. The numbers happens to be minus 15 and minus 1. All right, so when we take out common factors, we'll get to 3k minus 1 and k minus 5 as common factors uh, or as factors and equal to 0. So now you solve for each k will give you ultimate one third or k will give you 5. Again, we we're not looking for the values of k, but we're looking for the values of x raised to the power of a half or the square root of x. Right, so once you are here, you can actually continue. So I'm going to go to the next slide, but I guess if there is something that bothers you, pause and have a look again, or even rewind to see what is it that I have done. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, people. Uh, it's very important, and once you do that, also click on the notification bar, because I'm going to be posting quite a lot of these videos for this course. Right, so bringing back my answers from before, x raised to the power of half is equal to one third, or x raised to the power of a half is equal to five. To get x alone, you must take the square of both sides. Square of a third is one over nine, square of two, five is 25. Right, so that equation, you bring it back and then you see if it fits. If when x is one over nine, do you get zero? And when x is 25, do you get zero? In both cases, you get zero because it's equal to the left, the right hand side. Therefore, x is equal to 1 over 9 or x is equal to 25 are solutions to this equation. So this checking you just do very quickly with your calculator. Question 5, we've got 8x minus 14 times the square root of x is equal to negative 5. So the same like what I've been doing before. I'm going to decide to make this x raised to the power of a half squared. It's the same as x. And obviously the square root of x becomes x raised to the power of a half. And then I'm going to replace that x raised to the power of a half by some letter k. And once I'm here, I can actually find two numbers multiply, give you 40. That's 8 times 5. And if you add them, give you negative 14. They happen to be two negative numbers. So it's negative 4 minus 10. You can factorize and group them. And then you get to the factors 4k minus 5. And 2k minus 1 equals 0. So if that is the case, imply the 1 or both of the all. The other bracket should equal to 0. So therefore, if you solve for k, 4k minus 5 equals to 0, okay, five, k equals to 5 over 4. If you solve for 2k minus 1 equals to 0, you get k equals to a half. But remember, we're not looking for k, but we're looking for the square root of x, or x raised to the power of a half. Right, to get x then alone, we need to square both sides. So what I'm doing here is I'm just going to put the 5 over 4 in brackets because the 5 should be squared as well as the 4. x well is the half, 1 squared over 2 squared. So the two solutions will be x is equal to 25 over 16 or x is equal to 1 over 4 or 1 quarters. Right, so again, as I said, you can rewind just to make sure that you're on the right path. So I'm not entirely done. I'm going to take these solutions and I'm going to check them against my answers to see that it, are they giving me, in fact, negative 5. Right, so when I do check for x is equal to 25 or 16 as well as for x is equal to 1 quarter, I realize that I'm getting negative 5 as an answer. That simply means then that x equals to 25 over 16 or x equals to one quarter are solutions to this particular equation. Stand by for part two of the video where I'll do similar like, but now the powers are more fractions and just a little bit of things that are added and thrown into the bucket if one has to say that.